when world leaders like Joe Biden, Emmanuel Macron and Rishi Sunak thank PM Narendra Modi for making deals with their countries, it's not only elevated the importance of Modi on the global stage, but it also showed how the West perspective has changed towards India after 2014. India, which was considered a third world country, is now taking a central role in many international affairs, be it the Russia-Ukraine crisis, trade with Russia, climate change and many more. Modi has shown the world that he would do what's best for India. Let's look at a few achievements of Modi, which not only positioned him as one of the most powerful leaders in the world, but also elevated India on a global stage. Several Indian politicians and think tanks around the world ridiculed this idea when Modi promoted digital payments in the country. Several doubts were raised about how a country can shine in the digital economy when more than 50% of the population is uneducated and many don't even have bank accounts. But all the doubts evaporated when digital payments became a smashing hit. In order to make India a digital economy hub, PM Modi introduced Unified Payment Interface or UPI which is a real-time payment system and is useful for sending or accepting money from one bank to another. UPI payment system is useful in making payments without knowing any bank details. In order to make UPI easily usable, the Indian government created the Beam app, after which several companies like Paytm, Google Pay, Amazon Pay, Phone Pay and WhatsApp introduced UPI on their respective platforms. UPI proved to be a game changer and has changed the course of payment methods in India. Today, India stands at the top position in terms of doing payments through digital means. UPI has made India a global leader in real-time payment and has the world's largest real-time payment market system. Its success has driven several countries to introduce UPI in their markets. While countries like Singapore, UAE, Nepal, Bhutan and Malaysia already introduced UPI, France has also signed an MOU to introduce UPI for Indian tourists and students to make payments through this system. Narendra Modi at the 2022 BRICS summit said, India's digital economy will be worth $1 trillion by 2025. NPCI data showed that in the year 2022, UPI processed over 74 billion transactions worth Rs 125.94 trillion. According to a report by Worldline, a global leader in the payment industry, UPI has become the most preferred payment method for customers with a market share of 64% in volume and 50% in terms of value. Going by the numbers, one can assume why PM expressed confidence in touching $1 trillion by 2025. One of the significant sectors that have seen a massive revamp is the defense sector. India, which once used to import the majority of its weapons, automobiles and technology, is currently in the course of indigenization. World-renowned institute, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, recently revealed that Indian imports in defense sectors decreased by 21% between 2012 to 2016 and 2017 to 2021. In order to make India self-reliant in the defense sector, Narendra Modi introduced various reforms, one of the main being Make in India. Under this scheme, several reputed foreign companies are currently tied up with Indian companies and are working on indigenizing the Indian defense sector. PM Modi has opened gates for private companies to speed up the indigenization of armed forces. Several Indian companies like Tata, Mahindra, Bharat Kalyani, Elanti and many more are currently involved in various fields of modernizing the armed forces. Indian government has also increased spending on research and development in order to increase indigenous technology for the armed forces. DRDO, which is the main arm of India's defense sector, is designing technology and making missiles is being given the utmost importance these days. Several PSUs like Bharat Dynamic Limited, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Bharat Electronics Limited and many more are receiving bulk contracts which has resulted in the fall of imports. India in recent years has started to use indigenous light combat helicopter, light utility helicopter and Tejas, reducing dependence on foreign companies. Indian government introduced the Agnipat scheme to modernize the armed forces and reduce the age limit of soldier. The scheme offers youth to serve in the armed forces for four years. Several ministries, state governments and private companies offered employment for those Agnivirs who come out from the armed forces after four years. This scheme is aimed to make youth skilled, disciplined and patriotic. 
It also envisages making the armed forces more tech savvy. Narendra Modi government has achieved a lot in indigenizing and modernizing armed forces in the last few years, which is no smaller feat. Another area that saw strengthening is the country's border areas. India has built a strong fencing system across India Pakistan and India Bangladesh borders to curb infiltration. Apart from the fencing system, to counter Pakistan's supply of drugs and ammunition through drones, India is setting up an anti-drone system and has increased surveillance across the border. Indian government on several occasions during the parliament sessions proved with statistics that it has succeeded in curbing the infiltration from Pakistan. Under the leadership of Narendra Modi, India has adopted a zero tolerance policy against terrorists. This has given a free hand to the security forces in eliminating the terrorists who are trying to infiltrate from Pakistan. While many think India started to ramp up infrastructure across the India-China border after the Galwan clashes, it actually started way before, which was one of the reasons for the current standoff between the two countries. After the Galwan clashes, Border Roads Organization, also known as BRO, has been ramping up the infrastructure across the border in order to match up with China. Several roads have been built for the forces to reach the border in the shortest time. Several tunnels have been built for free passage during the winter season not only for the armed forces, but also for civilians. Be it Sela Tunnel, Atal Tunnel, Shinkula Tunnel or Zojila Tunnel, or Arunachal Frontier Highway and many more, India is leaving no stone unturned to match the level playing field with China in building infrastructure across the border. Apart from building roads for connectivity and smooth transport and improving infrastructure, the Indian government has also launched Vibrant Villages, to boost tourism and provide the basic amenities to the remote corner of the country. The move is aimed at stopping migration from the border villages and increasing the Indian presence in the border areas. The rise of tourists to the border areas will also result in the rise of the business sector, building up better infrastructure and setting up permanent houses for the tourists. The move is also envisaged to boost tourism in the border states like Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh. Opening up the border areas for tourism will give a clear signal to the Indian side, to the Chinese counterpart, that any misadventure in claiming Indian land will not be tolerated. As part of Vibrant Villages program, Uttarakhand selected 100 villages to develop as model villages. Similarly, Arunachal Pradesh allocated a budget for three villages to develop as a pilot project and to expand it further to several border villages in the future. The government has recently allocated over 4,800 crores to border villages of Arunachal Pradesh for the Vibrant Village program. Apart from developing villages, the government is also working on plugging the gaps in border forces in border areas. Taking note of this, the government has recently announced to raise seven new battalions of Indo-Tibetan border police to strengthen the surveillance across the line of actual control. By building a strong defense system and improving infrastructure, Modi government has strengthened the country's border areas. One of the most constantly appreciated policies of Narendra Modi during his premiership has been his foreign policy. Under the leadership of Narendra Modi, India has established several significant relations with various countries around the world. He has successfully established an independent foreign policy for India. Be it India-US, India-Israel, India-UK, India-Russia, India-Japan or India and West Asian countries. One cannot disagree that the relations with these countries have become very stronger than before despite having disagreements in several issues. After Jay Shankar took over as the External Affairs Minister in 2019, India has become a talking point several times due to its independent stand on the global stage. Jay Shankar, highlighting the human rights abuses of US in its own country, demonstrated the strong leadership skills of the Indian government. Despite significant pressure from the West, India has been continuing to trade with Russia. When the West tried to preach India about doing trade with Russia, Jay Shankar not only explained India's independent stand, but also exposed the West's hypocrisy on the global stage. Under the premiership of Narendra Modi, India is emerging as the only regional power that could take on China. This has been one of the main reasons why the West is maintaining good relations with India, despite having differences with India on many issues. India's growing economy, diaspora, has made it a strong ally for many countries. One of the significant achievements of Modi's foreign policy has been building a strong relation with the West Asian countries. 
India is one of the few countries that has good ties with Iran on one hand, Israel, Saudi Arabia and UAE on the other hand. This shows the significance of India on a global stage. Despite Pakistan trying every year to force Islamic nations to speak about Kashmir, it doesn't get support except from a few, namely Turkey and Nigeria. With India being an important customer for Saudi and US oil, the majority of the West Asian countries continue to side with India due to its growing economy and importance in the region. Under Vaccine Maitri, India distributed vaccines to several lower middle income countries and helped them in getting vaccinated through Indian manufactured medicines. As of February 2022, India delivered over 16.29 crore vaccines to 96 countries. India even distributed over 200,000 doses to UN peacemakers involved in UN peacekeeping missions. One cannot disclaim India's growing influence in global politics. Growing economy and strong leadership will play a crucial role in cementing India's position as one of the most powerful and influential nations in the world. Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos and don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.